Welcome, Carm Capriato, the Service Aftermarkets Podcast Pioneer, with the gold standard of aftermarket business podcasts. Join me for aftermarket insights as we advance the aftermarket. And as always, know that you'll learn just one thing. Find us on your favorite podcast listening app and RemarkableResults.biz or on my YouTube channel. Hey everybody, Carm Capriato, Remarkable Results Radio, nine and a half years of doing this. I don't know. You probably didn't know that, Ryan, but yes. Did not. We're so honored and always happy to be here at the EstaExpo.com. Raleigh, I got a lot to talk to you about what's going on here, and I need to introduce you to Ryan Reagan, the new executive director of Asta. But I also want to thank Napa Tracks for sponsoring us here this year. Really honored to be here via Napa Tracks, great SMS system. Ryan, congratulations and welcome to Asta. Thank you, thank you. It's been a drinking through a fire hose the last day or two. Oh my God, yeah. So here's the deal. He says, well, Carm, we'd love to inter- have uh, you interview Ryan. I says, well, great. So he's your new executive director? Well, kind of. And then he says, well, he's just coming in here to observe and to watch and to learn and to listen and to meet people, but he really doesn't start for a couple of weeks. Is that true? That's true. October 7th, actually. October 7th. Yes. All right. Big party, cake, all that stuff. Uh, I don't know about more, uh, more cold calling and hitting the pavement more. more you know so. what? Isn't it amazing? So, let's talk about that. Mm-hmm. Many associations that I've either known through the years or have watched grow, that feet on the street, knocking on doors to grow membership and look at somebody in the, yeah, okay, it's an association and I need to join. And it's a figment of people's imagination, yet they can see it on screen. They could see social media. They can see websites. There's nothing like a face-to-face. No, I mean, that's absolutely, I mean, let's be honest. People do business with people they like. And you can read a website if you've got time. A lot of these shop owners are not going to, you know, sit there and pry through and read websites and search for you. It's up to me to go out and tell them what we offer, what we bring to the table, how we can benefit them and their organization. And that's my job. You know, a lot of people will tell you, you're an executive director, you're going to cold call. That's my job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, ultimately, as you're in charge with growing the organization, there you go. And if you feel you may be carved out to be the best at it or if I was in your shoes, I'd go out and grow the membership. And then when you hired the new membership guy to replace you, you set the tone. That's it. That's what it's all about. I mean, I'm very much a lead by example type person. Yeah. We have certain markets that, that serve us quite well, that, you know, larger membership groups. And we have markets that we need to grow. That means windshield time. That means, um, you know, knocking on doors. You're going to walk into a shop. And it's going to be the worst day they're having in their life. You're going to leave a business card and not bother them. <laughs> and then you're going to walk into shops and they're going to have time and talk to you. Yeah, to your point, you've got to be smart yeah. about using people's time because the campfires are burning and you see that, but yet you want to force your way in. I mean, I love the fact that you'd say, listen, I'll be back next week. You know, I used to train managers uh, for another organization and and it was always funny to me. They would tell me how accomplished they felt. You know, I was putting out fires all day and you know, I really went home feeling accomplished. And, you know, I would always have to kind of bring them down to earth and kind of explain to them, your job is to put processes in place so you don't have those fires. <laughs> you know, I'm glad you're putting them out. But if you don't put a process in place tomorrow, you're putting out the same fires. I've always said processes and systems win wars. They do. I mean, without them, I don't care if it's a restaurant. I don't care what type of business yeah. you're in. It fails. And that's just the bottom line. You need to have structure. What's your background, man? I've been in nonprofits, biomedical side, healthcare side, international trade associations. And so, you know, from an SOP perspective, being in biomedical, blood banking, plasma center management things, so there's a, more SOPs than you can imagine. I'm already ready to faint. <laughs> yeah, it's something. I mean, the, the SOP, the FDA involvement, as you can imagine, is quite uh, regulated. So, and then, you know, I was in healthcare accreditation for a long time, doing the business development okay. both domestically and internationally. Um, and then was a membership director and industry relations director for Endo, which was an international trade association dealing with, you know, rather large memberships groups, you know, the Kimberly Clarks of the world. Are you going to have to move here to Raleigh? I live local. I'm, I'm oh, a local guy. Just, wow. uh, just south, down Fuqua. Wow, what a way to connect. So you're watching the training that's going on. Oh, yes. What's your takeaway here? You know, it's funny. I, I don't consider my, you know, I'm not a tech. That's not what I am. Uh, I'm, I'm a business guy. I, what I find is it's desperately needed in industry. I was talking to someone earlier and I, you know, when you look at what's happening, you have about a 30% turnover rate among techs, you know, industry-wide. About 50% of new techs leave after the first two years. And a lot of that, I feel, comes from inadequate training. 
and leadership. And so I think this is solving a lot of that. You know, you're getting a lot of training here. And I just want to keep it growing. I want to enhance it. I have a lot of ideas that I want to provide for members as far as on-demand training through us and, you know, on our websites. I want to put together a, a catalog library of, of things and resources for yeah. members yeah. only. Sure. I mean, it's just building that up, but it's desperately <clears throat> needed. So that 50% number that you just threw out, I sit on an advisory board, and what we know to be true, to your point, is that when the kids come out of school, and I'm not saying kids because they're kids, but when the students come out, usually within two years, they're gone. Yeah. And it's typically from a dealership because they go out on the loop rack and they don't see any career pathing going on. But the crime of that is that they go other places and they don't consider the independent world. Mm -hmm. So the message that I would give to you and to your management is to be involved as an association. The the beauty of the fact that that ASS is headquartered here, and I'm going to guarantee you, and I don't know who they are, but there's a lot of colleges that have automotive programs. If you could get on one of their boards, then the independent will have a huge voice and an opportunity to be in front of those students and say, listen, God bless you, you're going to the dealer, you find that very attractive, good. But please think of us, and maybe on the website in the future, you want to have a almost a tab that helps people know where they can connect with independence. It's funny you bring it up. You just hit on a lot of my next year initiatives. So we have some great relationships with some of the community colleges, you know, with the vocational term always kind of annoys me. Yeah. Um, uh. <laughs> so, you know, I was telling somebody too, it, it's amazing. You can go to a STEM school and you're some kind of genius. You know, you go to a vocational school and you're not. I find that fascinating to me, the stigma around it. But yeah, I, you know, one of my big initiatives, you know, over this next year as we're trying to grow is kind of a youth movement. There are merit badges for Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts in automotive, mechanical automotive things. And we're going to work with some partners, you know, and some of our membership shops to let's help initiate that. I want to be out in these schools. I mean, there's a high school program up in Durham. I want to be in front of these students, you know, and and men, boys, girls don't care. You Mm -hmm. know, anybody that has an interest in this, I want to get in front of them. I want to be in front of those schools. I actually want to set up with our members kind of an employment service where if you're coming out of school, you got a resume, you want to put it on, you can host it on our website. Our members can log in and, and you know, if they you fit what they're looking for, they'll give you a call. Apex 2024, one of the best industry training and expo events is now in the record books. Joe's Garage at Apex brought the best and the brightest together to create an interactive experience like no other. The concentration on emerging technology was cutting edge along with the latest in tools and equipment that bring efficiencies to your shop which is another reason to attend Apex. There were more than 60 training sessions for technical business management and HR. You participated in the EV experience stage at Joe's Garage along with ADAS Technology. If you did not attend, I bet you wished you had. Apex created specialty sections to make it super easy to find your area of interest like the tire service section, tools and equipment, the diagnostics telematics shop, and of course the EV experience. New in 2024 was the student competition on an engine build and features inside of Joe's Garage were from Autel, BG Products, Napa, Hunter Engineering, Bosch, Repairify Coats, and Solid Start, among others. Mark your calendar for Apex 2025, November 4th through the 6th in Las Vegas. Listen here to learn about exciting events planned for 2025 and when you can start registering. Hey, let's face it. Your shop management system is the single most important tool in your shop, period. Napa Tracks has made selecting the right shop management system easy by offering the industry's best, most comprehensive SMS. Now, it all starts when a local representative meets with you to learn about your business and how you need to run it. After all, it's your shop, so it's your choice. And having local representation is a huge plus. Customizing tracks to your business, whether you're a one-person shop or a large multi-bay or multi-location company, a representative consults with you to help optimize your shop's workflow, efficiency, and profitability. Tracks always has the flexibility to do business how you need to do it, which means it can also grow as your business grows. And unlike the other guys, we'll be there for you after installation with the best training and support in the business. Yes, a learning management system tailored to each role in your company. Simply put, Trax was designed and built for shop owners just like you. Visit us on the web at NapaTrax, that's N-A-P-A-T-R-A-C-S dot com. Hey, ever wonder how your labor rate compares to your market and state? You now have a site where you can confidentially upload your rate and see other labor rates published in your market. 
LaborRateTracker.com is an important site to know about. Currently, the database has over a thousand shops participating and growing every day. But there's more to setting your rates than finding out what others charge. You should look at the labor rates in your state and town to gain a complete picture of the labor rate landscape. Hey, it's easy. Get market intelligence like never before at LaborRateTracker.com. Two great things that you said I got a comment on. One of them was youth movement. Mm. I have met people in elevators, seen them, even in the class that I did yesterday morning. Young people just starting out, a couple years in, one fifteen months in, mm. in this think tank that we had, owner think tank. I was so impressed that they were coming here to learn. Yeah, key, key. When you're starting out, don't try to do things alone because you think you know what you, you don't know what you don't know. Also. You said the word vocational. Yeah. Well, we've got that all over New York State. And we had a chance to go and tour one of these big centers where there was cosmetology and health and welding uh, and so on down the line. And two automotive shops. When I was completely done having the tour with one of the regional directors of these centers, I said, I want you to change the name of what you call what, what you teach here. And it's a skilled trade center, not mm -hmm. vocational, but it's Perfect. skilled trade center. But that's what they already call it. And I said, I want you to add another word in the front of it. I want you to add the word essential. It is. Essential Skilled Trade Center. Because if those welders weren't learning, this building, this room, this equipment I'm using wouldn't exist. 100%. A doctor doesn't have a place to practice without all these other folks. <laughs> exactly right. No, 100%. He wouldn't have clients. No, right? it's humorous to me the way it's kind of viewed and things. And look, nothing against college. People do, you know, whatever your path is your path. I know from people in experience that you can go to college and four years later, you're going to come out in debt and you're going to start at the bottom rung of an organization of your choosing or that chose you. Or you can go to a skills trade center and in four years, you'll have no debt and be making a very good livable wage. Yeah, <laughs> so, I know. Which do you want? Yeah. <laughs> and only be unemployed if you're just a knucklehead or you're lazy because there's always a demand okay so what we have to do us people and i wrote an article for napa for nice. q3 of their insights magazine and it was called there's a crack in the foundation and we need to fill it mm -hmm. and it was all about this visit that i had but the fact that we as an industry need to get out to the parents and the superintendents and the counselors and the students and we need to tell our story of the opportunity that we have to work in not only an essential skilled trades industry, but a high tech one. Absolutely. And, you know, we were talking about the youth movement and, and to kind of retouch on that. I get tired of hearing, and I'm not a spring chicken myself anymore. But Wait a minute. I, no, no, no. You're very nice. <laughs> trimmed gray beard, by the well, way. I try. I try. But people talk about, you know, millennials, they're lazy and they're this and they're that. And it's funny. There's a few things folks don't understand. Millennials have donated more volunteer time than any generation since World War II. They're not lazy. They just like purpose and direction. They want to know what their purpose is and what they're doing. Again, career pathing. They want to know mm -hmm. what that is. And the misconception about Google and things like that, everybody thinks that people shop on Google and they do this. Nobody does that. They learn. Nobody says, I'm shopping for a refrigerator anymore. I'm learning what's the best refrigerator. And that's what these folks are doing as well. They're learning what's the best opportunity and the best path for them. I think when we start mixing our words around a little bit, it, it comes off a little differently. This is a, a good generation coming up, a lot of talent, a lot of passion, and it's just us to, up to provide them that purpose and that destination. Good stuff. Love that. <laughs> so besides getting out on the road and looking in people's eyes and shaking some hands, can you tell us about any other good things you, you think you have planned or you well, want to do? As an organization, again, we're, you know, Automotive Service Tire Alliance. I want to bring the Tire Alliance side of that house back up to a higher level. We have a lot of stuff here, you know, on the mechanical tech side things. Everybody should be selling tires, by the way. Yeah, yeah. good point. Everybody. Okay. <laughs> good point. And I want to get, you know, a lot more of our educational programs for that side of the house and, and things and, and really kind of ramp that back up to be a pivotal part. And to your point about, you know, foundation, we have a, a good group. We've got a great board. We've got a lot of passionate people. I've got a great team that I'm inheriting. 
But, you know, I look at the foundation and, you know, I want to make sure this foundation is solid. And then I want to start adding the pillars. And, yeah. you know, community outreach is a big thing. People look at associations as many different things. I can assure you we are not just a discount for this show, <laughs> you know, in this training. We are a community of professional people that yeah. are like-minded yeah. that yeah. want to help this industry. I love a lot of the technology that's come around, the transparency. If you look at, you know, Better Business Bureau numbers. It's one of the lowest industries there is, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think the DVIs and things like that are starting to add transparency and build trust. Did you know we had that? Well, just from my own experience of going to mechanic shops, okay, you know, right. and, and things. And I find it, to me, it was, you know, it takes away that, that old stigma. Oh, they're just charging me for something. They're upselling. No, I'm showing you, a, you know, here's a gasket leaking. You've never seen it. I'm showing you the photo of this. And it's adding a sense of transparency. So I think you're going to start to see an uptick in customer satisfaction ratings. And I think I had this conversation earlier. You're going to start to see a lot of the organizations not doing the DVIs, not keeping up with social media, not doing the right engagement to customer experience fall to the wayside yeah. and you're going to be left with a bigger better overall industry where you take your car to a mechanic or is it independent or it is it, it is it, it yeah. is yeah how long have you been going there probably i thank god I, i've got to go again for a range rover so that won't be cheap but <laughs> so, <laughs> you're already making an assumption oh well i already know i knew when i bought the thing yeah, exactly right <laughs> i was gonna say range rover money 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 you just know it's like owning a boat you know just throw money at it so <laughs> no i you know i've been going there probably since i came down here so it's right. uh, you know about six seven years so it's been good and that's the thing you know, I was raised not to be a dealership guy. <laughs> okay. But are you going to a, a particular Euro specialist? Uh, I go to, yeah, in Apex here. Okay. It's a, a particular okay. high-rising, fast-growing, actually, uh, uh, shop. Good, good. Yeah. The thing that I like about the fact that you get your car repaired at a, let's say, a membership-style site. It maybe is. Maybe it this is person a membership did, site. Th then did they have any influence on you getting this job? No, no. It was just, you know, for me, it was a timing thing. It was kind of good. Just looking at it, again, I'm a person that I love to build things. I love to develop people. You know, I like to see people grow, and I like to pull out of them what they don't even know they have. When I just saw the opportunity, and I, you know, I read the history, I learned about the mergers, and you know, and then I started meeting with the boards and the search committees and having conversations. It was just, it seemed like a fit. I'm like, this is a place I need to go because I can make an impact immediately. The things that you learned when you were a Marine, you still using that stuff? <laughs> Good and bad, yes. Oh. <laughs> if you ask my wife, probably. Right. Um, you know, it's funny. And that's another thing, you know, I'm looking forward to doing is reaching out military community national guards to help fill labor gaps. You know, there's a lot of national guard units around here in the, you know, tech industry, in the tech MOS fields that are unemployed. They show up for their guard duty, but they're unemployed in the regular world. You know, how can we start some transition programs and things like that? I tell people all the time, and I've worked with a lot of veterans groups back in the day. Um, employers know a military, I mean, I won't say everyone, but the majority have self-sacrifice. They have self-discipline. You know, they have ethics. And that's who they want. Yeah. You know, I've had a million people, you know, in my past that have worked with me and for me. And I can give them a lot of things. I can't give them self-discipline. You know, I can't make you get up when your alarm goes off. I can't make you show up. I can give you discipline for not having self-discipline. But When you went into the Marines mm -hmm. and you came out, were you a better disciplined person? Yeah, I was by far. It's very different. There are still things today that I do, and now I realize that it's still just carried over. I tend to, you have a lot of weird habits you pick up and you'll never let go. I eat very fast still to this day. I mean, because I never had time to eat, you know? And so when you did get a chance, you ate everything you could eat in a couple of minutes and just think, but yeah, I was more disciplined from a standpoint. You're more disciplined, but I, I think back at that time, to be honest, we weren't as probably emotionally, you know, intelligent because our jobs, you know, and how you live that lifestyle is completely different. You know, it's not a civilian type thing. You're not, you don't worry about who you're talking to as emotional. <laughs> you know? I love the fact that you have a military background and an association background, and you're coming to ASTA to make a difference. And now you're being emerged from a customer from the outside looking in to now an insider. Mm -hmm. You've got a lot of great What's the word I'm looking for? Scope or experiences that can help you probably ramp up quicker than ever. Hoping, hoping so. Yeah. I've seen a lot of what not to do. 
Um, I've seen a lot of things that were great, you know, at different organizations, different industries, and and a lot of them, you know, overlap leaderships and managements and budgeting, and a lot of those things are great. But I've seen a lot of things that weren't so great. You know, I've met so many people in the last 48 hours. Um, I was telling somebody I'll probably get elected in November. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've met so many people now. I think oh. I might be a write-in. I'm not sure. But <laughs> oh my God, that's, true. that's the next point I wanted to make. The people that you're probably going up and shaking their hand that are walking out of classes, what are they saying to you? You know, I'm happy. A lot of them are nice to meet me, and it's great. It, my concern to them is, you know, I'm wanting to know how they're feeling about their, you know, what do you think of the event? You're getting the education you need. What do you think? What do you like? I'm big on surveys. Now, I'm very big on surveys, very big on newsletters, very big on communication. I'm very big on asking our members what they want. Mm -hmm. I don't like to think we know. When you get a little arrogant like that, oh, we know what they want. They want it. Yeah, ask them what they want. They're there. It's not hard to communicate with them. I like to tell them what we're doing. You know, if we've got certain GR, certain legislative things we're tracking, I want them to know. I want them to know the progress. I'm very big on that because when you stop communicating, and this is both internal and external stakeholders, people tend to write their own narrative. And that narrative can be based on a lot of things, rumors. And, you got to tell them. Yeah. So it's up to us, you know, and so I'm big on communication. I'll probably over communicate at times, but I'd rather do that. Yeah. Um, well, you'll find your niche. Yeah. You'll figure out what works. God, well, congratulations. Oh. So appreciate you finding the time to oh. come in and speak with us. I'm going to be sitting on the sidelines watching all this great stuff you're doing. Well, I can't thank you enough for having me. I mean, you do a lot of great things for the industry. And again, you know, we'll have to revisit this. We'll have to check in and see where we're at. Can well, we do that? Absolutely. How about, how about next year? Ryan Reagan, a new executive director of ASTA, who's going to do something with the tire guys. <laughs> I am. So no, let's check in. Yeah. Let's keep it going. Yeah, I would really love to. I appreciate this. Thanks for being on, man. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure.